To make a move like that, you have to have kahunas and conviction. Long term, I'm bullish. We could see about a 20% correction next year. This is Josh Jelinski, the financial quarterback. Don't touch that dial. So we have record breaking inflation, GDP showing tepid growth. What are your thoughts on this? Well, uh, yeah, so inflation has been pretty high for the last year um, and uh, unnecessarily so. You know, some inflation, of course, is due to supply constraints, um, but a lot of that has, has already worked its way out of the system. Uh, the big issue here is the surge in, in nominal spending that we've saw over the last uh, year and a half and the Federal Reserve's reluctance to, to bring that inflation back down. That caused real output to uh, grow quite rapidly. And then in uh, the last couple quarters, we've seen a bit of a correction in that front um, as uh, real output um, has, has come back down to a trajectory that's a little closer to, to sustainable, um, but perhaps, perhaps uh, um, we're still overproducing a bit. Um, and so uh, whether or not that continues to come down, I think, remains to be seen. But that's kind of where we're at now. So what do you think will happen? Do you think in, there's two camps, right? There's the kind of Lacey Hunt camp that will have this disinflationary stew and the David Ranson kind of Larry Summers camp that will have uh, rampant inflation Maybe we'll have disinflation afterwards, but unless this inflation gets under control, you know, we could have a very real problem. Uh, where are you on that kind of spectrum? Well, I think that it's uh, it's important to keep in mind that um, that risk of prolonged inflation. Uh, every month that goes by, that the Fed fails to bring inflation back down to to something closer to two percent. Uh, individuals start to question whether or not it's actually committed to doing that. And if they lose faith that the Federal Reserve is is going to, to bring inflation back down and those inflation expectations rise, then it puts the Fed in an even more difficult position in terms of trying to deliver on its 2% inflation target. Uh, it, would, it would set up a situation where we would um, – uh, if inflation expectations were to, to become unanchored, where we would have a, a big economic contraction um, as a requirement to bring that inflation back down. Now, fortunately, I, I don't think that we're to that point yet. Uh, inflation expectations, uh, particularly longer term inflation expectations, are still reasonably well anchored. Um, but just because we're not there yet doesn't mean we're in the clear. Uh, it, it just means that the Fed needs to, to work to deliver that disinflationary uh, outcome um, uh, so, that, so that we can get this, this big mess behind us. So when do you think inflation cools? I know it's cooling a tad, but not really. Yeah, but not much. Um, you know, we, you have to keep in mind that there are, are uh, two reasons why we've experienced inflation. On the one hand, we've seen these supply disturbances. Uh, that pushes prices up. On the other hand, we have the surge in nominal spending. Um, the difference between those two is that with the supply disturbances, as those supply constraints ease up and, and real output in those areas begins to recover, um, prices are going to start to come back down in those areas, not back down to where they were a year ago um, because we do have that nominal spending problem, um, but lower than they, they are or have been. And we've seen that in areas like uh, like energy. Energy uh, rose um, uh, quite quickly over the last year, but over the last uh, three months or so, that's that's come back down. Um, and so that that downward pressure of on prices in these areas where supply constraints are are easing up and output is is reverting back towards a, a longer term trend, uh, that's that's pushing downward. Uh, that's putting downward pressure on headline inflation. Um, but the problem um, is that if you look at core inflation, it hasn't really budged much since the spring. That is, it's still cruising along um, at, at elevated levels. Uh, it's not obvious that the Fed has had any real effect on core inflation. That is, 
the rise in prices, excluding uh, volatile food and energy prices. Um, so that, that suggests that a lot of the reduction in inflation that we've seen over the last couple months is just the, um, the effect of some supply constraints uh, working their way out. Um, and isn't really indicative that the Fed's monetary policy is is having much of an effect yet. Um, so, so with that in mind, what's the what's the future look like? So, just uh, looking ahead here, um, you know, the Fed is projecting that inflation is going to remain high through 2024. Um, that's not too encouraging. Um, they, they're in a position to bring that down much more quickly. It's not clear why they don't seem uh, intent on doing so. Um, but they, they seem to have uh, charted a course here where they're going to bring inflation down gradually back down to 2%. And as a consequence of that, prices um, are, are going to be permanently elevated. You know, if, if prices grow faster than 2% for a period of time and then just return to 2%, then they will be on a trajectory that's higher than it was before this big surge in inflation happened. So we're going to we're going to be looking at uh, prices in the future that are higher than we were projecting they would be, say, a year ago. Um, and so uh, inflation is going to come back down um, over the next two years, um, but but not enough to restore prices to the same trajectory they were on, um, say, before the pandemic. I mean, part of me thinks this 2024 projection is really just a scam. So in the middle of 2023, when inflation cools, they can say, see, we were successful. And now we're going to bolster the economy that we've just tanked uh, when they realize, you know, if if the Dow is 25,000 and real estate collapses 30 percent because people can't afford mortgages, at a seven to nine percent interest rate, like they will have achieved their goal of cooling inflation, but that's because asset inflation is cooled. But then all of these other things you might call core inflation. You know, when I say asset inflation, if stocks and real estate went up fifty percent the last so many years, people feel richer. They're going to spend more money. So if they make people feel poor, that wealth effect's down. So how much of this is real inflation versus the wealth effect? And how much of this is just the Fed's guessing? Well, I, I think we've experienced quite a bit of real inflation. You know, if you go to the, the gas pump, uh, prices are, are uh, 20% higher than they were last year. If you go to the grocery store to purchase your, your food, uh, food prices are up uh, 12%. Over the last year, those are real uh, price increases. Uh, Core inflation, I think, is up uh, about six and a half percent, six point six percent over the last year. So we're we're seeing some real inflation. Um, But you know, you're right. The Fed the Fed is guessing, uh, but so far they have been guessing uh, in a way that systematically underestimated how high inflation would be. They have had to revise up their projections of inflation. Uh, every quarter since December 2020. Um, so they have a track record of missing, um, but it's uh, missing in the direction of being too low. Now, perhaps perhaps uh, when inflation comes back down, they'll start making those errors in the opposite direction. Um, that's certainly possible. Um, but at the moment, I, I don't see any reason to, to think that that's the case. I think that um, they're very reluctant to bring inflation down too quickly. They don't want to to risk uh, a recession. They have been incredibly slow so far. I mean, remember, they they recognized this inflation problem last November. They didn't really change the course of, of monetary policy until May or perhaps even June. Uh, so so they just they, they aren't really taking a very fast approach here to bringing inflation down. And I don't see them speeding up anytime soon. I think they're they're going slow and steady here and hoping that that will be sufficient. Do you think it will be sufficient? Well, eventually. Um, they, they had a big miss, uh, but they have, uh, you know, they, they're in the process of correcting. And so eventually uh, inflation will be back down to something like 2%. But the question is just how long that process is going to take. Um, 
I think that, uh, you know, for, for workers who um, have already renegotiated their wages, uh, they're hoping that this inflation comes down quickly because it's going to be difficult for them to, to make a big renegotiation again. Um, and and uh, if they're not able to renegotiate, then they're going to see their uh, real wages continue to, to erode. Uh, typically, real wages rise over time, but since January 2020, our real wages have declined around 2%. Um, that's in real terms, right? After adjusting for inflation, um, the, the median worker today is, is making less than they were just prior to the, to the pandemic. Um, so, so hopefully they'll be able to, to, to clean this up quickly, but um, I'm, not, I'm not so optimistic that they will. Do you think we will have deflation afterwards? Well, I think deflation is, is pretty unlikely. In, in August of 2020, the Federal Reserve adopted a, a new framework for, for monetary policy. Uh, in 2012, it had, it had explicitly adopted an inflation target. In 2016, it modified that uh, to clarify that it was a symmetric inflation target, meaning inflation would be just as likely uh, to hit 2.1% as 1.9%. Um, but then in August of 2020, they, they adopted what we now call a flexible average inflation target. And um, that flexible average inflation target is not symmetric. They have been very clear that they're more, uh, more inclined to have inflation be more than 2% than less than 2%. So you don't think we'll have deflation. Inflation is rampant and only seems to be increasing. How long do you think this will continue at its current rate? Well, I think that um, at its current rate, uh, you know, we're going to see that rate of inflation come down slowly, uh, maybe even over the next couple months. But it, it's going to remain elevated. Um, you know, we're, we're not going to be back to three and four percent by the end of the year. Um, and, uh, you know, we we may have uh, three or four percent inflation in 2023. That doesn't strike me as as uh, um, as crazy. I think the Fed is currently projecting uh, two point seven percent inflation for next year. But again, they have underestimated inflation every quarter since December 2020. And so I won't be surprised if if we have three or three and a half percent inflation uh, next year as well. So you're not one of these like persistent inflation guys? Like in the no, I don't think that um, we're going to have four percent, five percent, six percent inflation as the new normal. Um, I think that uh, Chair Powell has been very clear that this was a mistake. Um, that the Fed is not intending to deliver uh, high inflation year after year. Um, inflation will probably be a bit higher than it has been in the past because, again, that flexible average inflation target says that if inflation is greater than 2%, um, they, they'll uh, bring that back down to 2%. But if it's less than 2%, They'll actually allow inflation to be above 2% for a period in order for, for that um, uh, below 2% inflation to uh, be offset. And so this is going to tend to deliver greater than 2% inflation uh, um, you know, in the long run. Um, but how much greater? Well, maybe 2.1%, 2.2%, uh, something like that, not uh, 4% or 5%.